On the 10th of February 2021, Netflix announced that they had reached a deal with Penguin Random House Publishing to produce an animated feature film as well as an ongoing series of the Red Wall books. A release date has yet to be announced, but according to articles online from sources such as Variety and AnimationMagazine.net, the project is currently in development with Patrick McHale. McHale's previous work includes creating and writing the TV miniseries Over the Garden Wall. Now this is not the first time an animated Red Wall series has been created, but it will be the first Red Wall animated feature in over 20 years. As I've said in a previous episode of Furry Fandom Stories, if it wasn't for the Red Wall books I never would have been a furry, but I do want to express my hopes for and reservations about the upcoming series. I'm Sandy Brushtail, and here are my thoughts on the upcoming Netflix Red Wall Saga. Learn from Nelvana's mistakes. The biggest mishandlings Nelvana did with the Red Wall property were evident in the first season. The first two episodes of a Nelvana animated series were a heavily abridged telling of the first book, and a lot of the original material was also heavily edited and altered. This led to important plot events that were supposed to occur towards the end of the novel taking place in the first half of the series. As a result, the rest of the series seemed to meander about before getting to the end. Not to mention those awful original episodes that didn't seem to add anything to the overarching plot and introduced a few non-canon characters for the novel's protagonists to interact with. It wasn't until the second season when Nirvana finally got their act together and began to adapt the books into a faithful narrative. I hope that Netflix does not follow this example and be faithful to the original material as well as having no throwaway episodic stories. A coherent adaptation. When I say coherent adaptation, I mean to be faithful to the book and have the key plot events happen chronologically. A good example of how not to do this would be a look at the recent CBS production of Stephen King's The Stand. The first scene of the first episode is the survivors living in a boulder free zone, clearing out a church of plague victims and suddenly cutting to five months earlier. It would be the equivalent if the first episode of the Netflix series began with Matthias being captured by the sparrows, put on trial by King Bull Sparrow, and suddenly to cut to earlier that summer to see Matthias talking to Abbot Mortimer about Martin the Warrior. Now the CBS adaptation was more faithful to King's original novel, but as a result of jumping forward and then backward in time, it made the plot very confusing and hard to follow. Not to mention that a good portion of the CBS production was wasted thanks to the garbled approach to storytelling. The old flashback now and again can be good to give exposition and backstory to certain characters, but don't make it the method of how to tell the story. Voice acting that make characters feel alive. There have been a lot of Red Wall fans online gushing about what legendary British actors they would love to hear voice certain characters. The usual suspects keep cropping up, names like David Tennant, Sir Patrick Stewart, Miranda Richardson, Hugh Laurie, Daniel Radcliffe, Sir Ian McKellen, Joanna Lumley, Emma Watson and Stephen Fry. Personally, I think that Brian Blessed would be an awesome Orlando the Axe. How about getting some slightly unknown acting talent on board? Be a good jumping off point for them. When it comes to voice acting, what I want to hear is emotion in their voices not to drone out their lines and make them sound indifferent to the events that's happening around them. I also don't want to hear a group of Anglo-Canadians trying to do their best Dick Van Dyke and Mary Poppins impression. Make me fall in love with the books again. The last Red Wall book I ever picked up and read was Triss, and it's that book which made me fall out of love with the series. The main antagonist was a foreign monarch, stuffed with cliché, and the writing style suited to younger readers made me cringe a little inside, and I was starting to get downright bored. If you're a fan of a certain book series, and you find yourself skimming along the pages instead of reading intently, it's time to give it a rest. I would still pick up and read Martin the Warrior, Mal Fox, or Red Wall from time to time, but Triss was the last Red Wall book I ever bought, and my highest hope for this new Netflix series is to get me invested again, where I want to pick up and read the books I've missed out on. 
books like Doom White and Lone Hedge. Conclusions I know it's common practice on the internet to say everything is rubbish without giving the subject a chance to defend itself, but you know what? I'm hopeful. Considering all the good content Netflix has given us over the years, like Bojack Horseman and Beastars, I'm curious as to what Patrick McHale and Netflix will bring us in the coming years. Thanks for watching. If you like what you saw, please leave a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. You can follow me on Twitter at SandyBFox. I'm Sandy Brushtail, and I'll see you again soon.